Hi everyone, I am Toski01 and I'm here today with an RPG Maker tutorial. Now this is the start of a little series I'm doing here for RPG Maker. So I hope you guys enjoy and uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Today we're going to be going over making an auto save event. Now RPG Maker MV doesn't have an auto save feature available. Some people have made plugins for this, but I haven't for the life of me been able to actually make them work. So I decided to use common events in order to make this happen. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this show on the road. Now, this is actually my first uh, YouTube video here and I plan to do some other series involving uh, RPG Maker, RPG Maker games, and other pixelated style graphic games and so forth. So, in our common events, I have here common event 51 that I've called autosave. Here I have created a script where it's just three lines. The first one is, um, is an if conditional where we are going to the data manager and we're going data, data manager dot last accessed save file ID. We're going to call that and check it if it's not equal to zero because on the indexing the IDs start at one for this so once we make sure that it's not zero we call the uh, we call the game system dollar sign game system dot on before save now what this is going to do is it's going to actually let us to successfully create the save file once we actually call the data manager to save it otherwise without that line if we load up the save data from this event it could be corrupted it ain't gonna work and no one's gonna have a good time so lastly we're gonna end it up with data manager dot save game and in parentheses we're gonna call again the data manager last access save file ID so what we're doing here is we are using the last ID of that was either used or the next one available to actually save the file. So if someone starts a new game, it's going to go to an unused save slot for the game. Otherwise, if a player ha is continuing off um, a save file that, that they just loaded, when this event's called, it's going to use that exact same save file ID. So that is pretty darn nifty. So feel free to copy all that as we go along. So now the next step here, I on this little map, I have an event on this statue here where I do a simple text prompt and with some choices where I'm going to say it's time for an autosave and my choices are either yes or no so when I select yes I'm going to call my autosave event and then I'm going to show text done otherwise no I'm not going to do anything so now uh, there's a quick comment here with done is it's going to appear every single time that I'm going to load this file so, it's, so if you are doing certain cutscenes that um, you want to do, say it's an intro for a boss or something, and the player loses, and oh no, they forgot to save. Well, if you do this, do that cutscene, after you do the autosave, the player won't isn't going to have to worry about actually losing any of the progress up to that point. So it's kind of nice. So let's see that in action. But beforehand, let me just do something really quick here. Don't mind me. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that we start with no save data. And the way we do that is we go into your actual game file. Go under save. And what we're going to do is, I see here that I do have some save data here. I'm going to delete the global and every single 
um, file that says file with a number on it. I'm going to leave my config because that's just that just keeps your sounds auto run and those little things. So now we should see no save files. Let's go ahead. Give this a run. So first we're going to select continue. Okay, so I see. So it looks like we didn't clear it out. Or I cleared out the wrong. I actually cleared out the wrong file. So let's start this over real quick. I deleted the wrong data. So going back here. Actually, actually I, I don't care. Save. Delete those. Go again. Perfect. You see here, no save data. Start game. So I'm a little character here. So let's go over here on this side. Let's talk to the statue. And we're going to select yes. So I see done. Great. Let's end this game. So now we just see a new file on the continue. Perfect. So let's see if it loads up. Perfect. And like I expected, we get the done message. So since we loaded the file, let's see if the autosave goes back and saves over this file once more. Yeah, go move. Yeah. So we're going to say on this side. So we should see the time change and then when we load up the position change of our character. So now our time is increased. And now we're on the other side and we still get the done message. Pretty nice. Let's end this game and start a new game and do the same thing. This time we're going to the front of the statue. So now we should see two save files. And here we have two. So if I load the second one, we should be in the front of the statue. This time in the back. Let's try this one more time. And we're in, and we come back to the back. Let's check on, back on our first save file. We're still on the left. So here you can use the auto save event without worry about interfering with any other any of the other save files a player has. So I hope you find this tutorial very uh, useful in your um, game development in RPG Maker. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, I do have uh, one shot. In the works, I am very excited about that. I uh, hope you guys will join me in uh, in that one, <clears throat> and uh, I look forward to seeing what you guys think and continuing on this little journey of mine. Until then, I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>